I'm Steve Saunders, and I'm joined by Miko Yava from Nokia and Joe Wood from Vodafone to discuss the innovative concept of network as code, which promises a significant shift towards greater automation, efficiency, and flexibility in service delivery. Miko, can I start with you? Yep. Could you give us a, a very quick overview or explanation of what network as code is? Right. We think, and we are certain, and we can already see that the next generation of the applications, they will have a very different kind of demands for the network. And uh, we want to transform the network and digitalize the network for those applications. And while we're talking about network as code, we think that part of the network needs to live within the application itself. So a developer of that application can just take a line of code, integrate that into the application, and voila, the application becomes powered with all the fantastic network capabilities. It can shape the network, it can get information from the network, it can make services more secure and so forth. Wow. That's what it is. That's a great explanation, Miko. Joe, um, have you had any experience of network as code? Yeah, so I think from a Vodafone point of view, we would see these as network APIs and uh, what we want to create is those services and access to our network, whether that's network information or the configuration of the network itself. Uh, so we've started to develop those services over the last couple of years. And actually here at Mobile World Congress, we've been working with Nokia to power the hackathon uh, over at the uh, old Afira. Uh, so we were there yesterday running the kind of judging and, and looking at all the different innovative ways that the different hackathon teams have been using those services to start to build out the promise of those applications that Miko was referring to. I, I'm assuming one of them is probably automation. Is that a big does that play a big part in, in the goals here for Network as Code? So the kind of services that the developers were using for the hackathon are the likes of location services, mm -hmm. verification and authentication services, anti-fraud products, uh, and then starting to work towards the configuration of the network where we can actually give the customer a better experience if they're trying to do, say, broadcasting or remote surgery, being able to make that ability to configure the network accessible for the developer community via their applications. That's really interesting. So obviously you're very customer facing and you're thinking about uh, the, the way that you can improve services and applications. Is the goal here really to make more money? So from our perspective, it's, it's customer in the loose sense. So for us, the role is to create the API products and mm. to make sure that they're consistent and they're scalable across industry. We then make them available in a platform like Network as Code, mm. which provides an environment for a developer to come and use those services and build them into those products, which ultimately are what would go to the end user. Mm. So the API would be a bit of a stretch for your standard customer, right. but with the developer in the middle, it's really interesting to see what innovative services and products that they can come up with and how they can put those network APIs to good use. Yeah, that's really cool. So it sounds like uh, this is not a uh, a Vodafone Nokia play as much as an ecosystem play, is that right? And that's, I guess, the purpose here of having an open system like Network as Code. Is that right, Miko? That is, that is exactly right. Mm -hmm. You know, what we are looking into here is to expand the ecosystem and, of course, expand the possibilities to what the ecosystem can create. And, and the, the user experience is a very important thing in here in the end. And there is multiple type of user experience we are looking into it. One of them is, of course, the developer experience. So how easy it is for developers to consume those network capabilities and bring them into the application. But eventually, the applications, they need to provide new value. Mm -hmm. And that then provides new, better user experience and journeys. And if you think about if applications can be integrated with these network capabilities as code or as APIs, then they will be enabling entire new type of user experiences, more powerful, more secure, mm -hmm. and then more better automated, optimized user experiences. Yeah, and ultimately something you can charge more for if you're Vodafone. I but but you're right. definitely yeah. right. This is not, it's not a Vodafone thing. Mm. Uh, in fact, it's more important than ever that we collaborate as industry. Mm. Some of those application providers, for example, they don't know which of the which network their end user is associated right. with. So here in Spain, they don't know whether the customer is on Vodafone, on Telefonica, mm. or on Mass Orange. Therefore, it's really important for any service where they want to be able to access all of Spain. For mm. example, if it was a taxi company that was building out an application for a, for a taxi ride, 
we need to have consistency of services across the telco operators, consistency of how the service is designed and exposed, and ideally all in the same platform so that when they go into Network as Code, there is a solution in there for all of Spain or Spain, Germany, UK, mm. uh, as required. So definitely a, a, a big focus for us is collaborating with the rest of industry and encouraging the rest of industry also to build out those services for the network. So a new sort of form of cooperation, really. I mean, it's a, it's a slightly different look for the telecom industry, I think. Um, and a, as you say, it pulls the developers in. Um, what's been the reaction of the developers? Have they had any critical feedback? Have they have they found it challenging to work within the system, or has it been pretty positive with the ones you've it's worked with? It's been quite so positive. The developers are very uh, agile to understand how to use the platform, and mm -hmm. they have found it easy to use. And uh, and uh, of course, then the challenge is for them to also to to understand the new kind of capabilities that now are available, and then how to use it. But based on the outcome of the hackathon, it really wasn't a challenge in the end. That's so there really were some really news. nice innovations and done in yeah. very short time, yeah. you know, integrating a lot of these capabilities and building entire journeys mm. on those. So, so in public safety, in yeah. uh, transportation optimization, and then then also in delivery services. Well, if you're doing all of those, you might as well go into energy and the grid and anything, maritime. Anything, yeah. It's the world, isn't yeah, it? It's that's the right. hundred hundred trillion dollar GDP market. <laughs> that's where we live. Um, Joe, uh, you know, it sounds really positive and congratulations to both you at Vodafone and Nokia for being participating in something which sounds really transformative, but it's still early days, right? Um, where is uh, Network as Code on its journey and when do you expect it to start to be widely implemented and, and showing up across the telecommunications biome? So we're, we're, we're a few years into the journey in all transparency. So GSMA has had an open gateway initiative, which it founded a few years ago. Last year, we were on stage here launching products that stretched right across the Spanish market and the German market. This year, we've had now 16 markets that have come mm. to the table and we have, we have products that are completed. Industry has worked to create a joint venture in this space. Mm. So there's quite a lot of progress for what is the structure that we need in order to collaborate. We have a new standards body called Camara, which is yes, very developer focused and developer centric. Now, the challenge to make this real, to make this tangible, is execution. Okay. We need to focus on building out those services. Now we've got the feedback from the developers, how we can improve them and, and, and make, make them really kind of the great customer experience. We need to make sure we have scale. So we need as many operators in each of the markets to have those services mm -hmm. so we can start to unlock that opportunity. And I think really that's the biggest task for uh, 2025. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate you coming Thank in you. and talking Thank to FNTV. Congratulations. Thank Thanks you very much.